Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 135 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Let's get to it. First one's called One Way to Prove. Hi Mark, I can't necessarily call myself a Flat Earther as of yet. What I am is a listener. I take in all things that make sense. In the presence of problems or conflicts that often arise in life, I try to find solutions. I've thought about one key way to disprove a spherical and rotating Earth. This can simply be done with a dirigible or airship. Wow, I haven't heard that word in a while. Simply launch a dirigible, let's call it a zeppelin, shall we? And with its onboard navigation gauges, hold it in one place for six to eight hours. After this time lapses, bring the Zeppelin back to Earth. If the Zeppelin comes down and lands in the exact same place in which it took off from, plus or minus 100 yards, allowing for wind force, then there is no Earth rotation. Very simple. Just takes a large or organized group of folks to acquire the Zeppelin and begin testing. That's from Tony Curtis. You know what? I don't hate that idea. I, I don't think it's going to prove anything to anybody because science will have all sorts of fun ex explanations for that. Uh, this one's called Planets. Mark, I noticed Jupiter in the sky yesterday morning and noticed it's very, very bright. It gives off a light like the sun and the moon, stars, etc., but isn't described as a luminary in mainstream. As the other planets, no mention of much on the planets. I am a flat earther, but this could be something everyone can clearly see. The planets light up. There's no explanation for this in round earth theory. Thanks, Erica. Uh, I don't I don't know. Nobody else has really talked to me about Jupiter recently. Is, is Jupiter really, really bright in the sky right now? I, I don't know. So somebody, somebody verify this. I, I don't know <laughs> much about what, what's happening with the brightness of Jupiter. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. My name is Terry. I'm very interested in Flat Earth Truth, and I have multiple questions to ask you. That's good. Uh, you can email me back here or text me. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate this, appreciate this video. I'm watching. Great job. Keep doing what's right and spreading the truth, no matter what anyone thinks. Hope to hear from you soon. Terry O'Neill. You know what? I'm going to write him right now and say, uh, Hey, Terry. Ask away. Thanks. All right, hopefully Terry will write back and I won't be able to get to this for a while, but you know, he'll get there. Uh, this one's called Ring of Power. Mark, go! Thoughts on the subject? Uh, yeah, because you probably heard me say on different interviews uh, that myths and legends, you know, some are true. And with the Ring of Power, otherwise known as Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit, uh, do I think it's real? Yeah, I, I do think there's a version of that out there. It's called the Signet of Solomon. Look that up if you get a chance. Uh, otherwise known as one of the uncanonized books of the Bible. Uncanonized meaning they, they didn't allow it in there. Uh, this one called the Testament of Solomon. And it talks about a ring that Solomon got all his power from this magic ring that was given to him by an angel, supposedly. Now, since Solomon's father was David of David and Goliath fame, I'm wondering if David actually had the ring before Solomon and that's how he took down Goliath. Not with that stupid little slingshot, but did he have, if he, cause if he had a ring of power and I'm saying that the ring of power wasn't like the Gollum ring of power. I think it was much, much uh, different, had different effects. Uh, and in this case, again, if you want to look it up, I'm not going to go into it. It takes a long time. Look up the Testament, Testament of Solomon and the seal of Solomon or the signet of Solomon. So check it out if you get a chance. So there's my thoughts, Nathan Fowler. This one's called Aloha. Questions about the flat earth. Mark, Aloha. First, I'm, I'm gathering you're from Hawaii. First, let me start this email with the following. I have no intention to mock you or your beliefs. I watched the Netflix documentary and watched your very first video on YouTube. I'm not a believer of the flat earth, but your beliefs intrigue me, as they do with a lot of people. With that said... I do have a question for you. I did post this in the YouTube comments section of your first video and I have copied pasted it below. Holy smokes. Okay. First off, the, the comment section of my very first video, I think has what tens of thousands of comments in there. I, anyone that pastes a comment in there, it's not going to be answered by me. I, I'm sorry. I've got 1500 videos now. It's about, I don't even, even if I did look at the comments on a regular basis, I don't because I want to sleep at night. I, I just don't have the time to, to answer those. Anyway, uh, her question is, or statement is, 
I respect your decision to believe in a flat earth. However, what I can't understand is how you go about proving the flat earth. For example, you use GPS when traveling with Patricia in Houston to see the NASA Museum. GPS is a government-run system. Oh, this person is only helping me right now. Why do you trust that system but not trust the claim of globe earth? I don't trust that system, but the plane's got to land eventually. I'm saying that when you're over land, the GPS system is just the uh, the uh, what's known as the old Loran system, which is a ground radar system. I'm saying that, oh yeah, there's radar guiding planes here and there for the most part, but those planes... Um, when they get out over, over water, uh, past land radar range, aren't tracked anymore. So on over land, yeah. Yeah, I do track the GPS system, but I don't think it's satellite based. I think it's ground radar based. Anyway, sorry. There. Further, you implicitly trust the government in a number of other ways. Using currency, drinking public water, getting vaccinated, using interstate freeways, driving automobiles, flying aircraft inside the United States. The list goes on and on. Where do you draw the line on what the government can be relied on for and what cannot be relied on for? If the government is willing to provide... I, I actually like this email. Uh, if the government is willing to provide things like GPS for public use... <laughs> oh boy. Uh, why would they lie about the shape of the earth? Oh, wow. A flat Earth would require three GPS satellites. No, they say they have 30. Why are there 24? Actually, they say there's 32. If your answer is the government could be lying about the number, then why do you trust them enough to use them for directions? Break, break. I'm a big why guy. I can't understand the why. I usually dig deeper. So my why question is to you, why would anyone lie about the shape of the earth? Along with that, they would. why would anybody lie about the earth's tectonic plates or how mountains and valleys were created? Anyways, I know you're a busy dude, so I appreciate any time. You have to answer my questions. All the best, Woodrow. And the why, hopefully he got into that, that we talk about that in the Flat Earth Clues. But that's an interesting question. And I have not got this often. It's like, why do you trust the government on our things? I, generally, I don't. Uh, the, the saying I love so much is trust everyone but count your change. Look, the currency system we have in this country is an absolute lie. It's based on nothing. There is no gold. Remember the gold standard we abandoned decades ago. Pub drinking public water. Really? You want to talk about what's in the water? Uh, and a lot of the times I don't. I drink, you know, uh, um, distilled water sometimes. Uh, getting vaccinated. Oh, no, I have a strong opinion on vaccinations, which anyone can look up in other shows. Using interstate freeways. Come on, that's just roads. Just because the... And that's and it's usually county and or state roads. The, the federal government, yeah, they give the money for interstate freeways. Come on. Driving automobiles. How is that tied to the government directly? Uh, flying aircraft inside the United States. Yes. Again, ground radar systems. I do... Look, I'm not saying that the government isn't completely trustworthy. I'm saying that they do things for the greater good. And sometimes they make decisions, well, a lot of times they make decisions that the general public just couldn't make on their own. They're not going to do it. They're impossible decisions to make. Uh, sacrificing men, for example. It, it, the perfect example would be war. And that is, in any battle, there are generals that sacrifice troops to bait the forces to, uh, to, to launch an attack and you counterattack and, and do all this fun stuff. Well, the, would you do that if you knew your son or daughter was in that particular battalion that was going to be sacrificed? No, you probably wouldn't, but there's a lot of men out there that, or people out there that would. The tough decisions are made by the government a lot of the time. And so I can, I can, I come down on them sometimes, but other times like, look, the greater good is the greater good. Uh, the great line by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he said, only tell the public as much truth as they can handle. So sorry, I, I don't trust the government on a lot of things because history is just lies that are agreed upon that Napoleon said that. So anyway. This one is called, wanted to say how well I think you're doing. Hey, Mark, my name is Sebastian, and I've tried contacting you before, but understand how busy you must be. Just want to once again wish you luck in everything you say. I love the work you're doing. It seems that each year goes on, your knowledge spreads, and you deserve a congratulations. Thank you. That's very, uh, it's appreciated. Uh, I, you know, I, I, because I don't read a lot of comments on YouTube, I also miss the compliments, but you know, I take the good with bad. There's, there's so many trolls out there that I, I just don't want to deal with it, but thank you for that. Yeah. If anyone wants to send me compliments or send me happy things, and of course there's also trolls that'll that every once in a while fire an email to me, please, by all means, shoot an email to this address. Next one. This one's called the Falklands. Uh, Tierra del Fuego dot dog com. <laughs> 
Uh, hi, Mark. First off, thanks for all the hard work that you and other Flat Earth YouTubers do to producing content and waking people up from the Jimmy Jones juice. Uh, I, I see that. Uh, I know you probably heard of the idea before, but can some of us at Flat Earthers get together and raise funds and send a rocket fitted with GoPro cams up from the Falklands or Tierra del Fuego? Perhaps a 45 degree angle would do the trick so we can get a good Auguste Picard perspective. I'm thinking that guys like yourself have more money and resources to pull this off. What do you think of this idea? I would appreciate if you could let me know your thoughts. Stay flat, and that's from Lucas. Uh, Lucas rockets are super expensive if you're going to fire them over uh, 30 miles. Uh, really, I mean, I mean, yeah, I know there was that amateur rocket that fired off at uh, it's like 70 miles, and I'd love to. It, actually, somebody should talk to those guys and see how much it cost them. It was not cheap though, uh, and then shooting it from the Falklands, woo, that's going to be tough because how are you going to get that rocket down there? What sort of customs thing nightmare do you have to go through there? Oh yeah, by the way, we're just carrying this ballistic missile with us through customs. Uh, oh yeah, it's in a crate. It's fine. It's like really, uh, not not going to be that easy. Uh, this one's called Interview Request, Researching Flat Earth. Dear Mr. Sergeant, hope you're well. Don't mind me getting in touch. I'm researching as part of postgraduate team at the University of Bath in the UK, exploring the way of the Flat Earth movement, how it frames its arguments. I wondered if I could reach out to you with an interview request. Uh, essentially, with, within academia, I feel that it's very common for researchers to find patterns in people's work or interviews without ever giving the subject a right of reply. As a part of a group project, we have been analyzing some of your work, so as part of my independent analysis, I was wondering if it would be possible for me to discuss these observations with you to see if you agree and with and which you think aren't quite a good fit. If you're interested, can I send you over the relevant information and we can try to find a time that suits you? I know you must be busy. Everybody says that. So I can try and keep the interview uh, to strictly a half hour unless you'd like to talk for longer. Would this be of interest? Best wishes. Maya and hopefully I wrote back to her uh did I oh boy hang on so I just took a few seconds there and wrote her back because I'm not sure if I I, I get a lot of emails and a lot of requests so I just decided to write her back and say uh did I wrote, write you back every once in a while my email system there's a little check mark you know in, my, in um, Comcast that says uh, whether or not you sent him a reply and it didn't have one. It's like, really? I'm usually pretty good about that. Anyway, this one's called Pastor Preaching Flat Earth Truth from the Bible. Uh, it's, hey, Mark, do you, you need to watch this. It's amazing. And it's a YouTube link. And the video is called Pastor Preaching Flat Earth Truth from the Bible. Oh, yeah, it's from Celebrate Truth. I, come on, guys. This is from the middle of last year, tw June 4th, 2018. Assume that if the video is nine, not even, if if the video is three months old, at least three months old, I've probably seen it. Because I, I, that's what I do all day is I, I look at content. So, but thank you for sending. But again, if, it, if the video is a year old, come on. It's, it's a long time ago. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth, Pangaea, and Continental Drift. Hi, Mark. What is the Flat Earth Theory's position on Pangaea and Continental Drift? If the pieces of the original supercontinent keep dri drifting farther apart, will they not eventually meet the edge? Best regards, Ryan. Yeah, it's a great point. And that is Pangaea makes way more sense on a flat Earth than a globe. Uh, if Pangaea, if you guys don't know what Pangaea is, uh, it's the, the idea, and I believe it, that the continents were all just this big lump and that terraforming ensued shortly after that. And uh, we, the continents, if you look in a flat map, they just kind of spread, si you know, outward naturally, outward towards the edges, where on a globe, you know, they still, you know, they, they spread out really weird. Uh, again, if you want to look, some look at some interesting stuff, take a Mercator map and turn it upside down and notice where all the, uh, the pointy bits on the maps point. They all point south, all of them. And that doesn't make sense, or is that statistically possible? Because they should be pointing in different directions. Uh, and I just thought that was really odd. But on a flat map, they all point out. It's all, it seems pretty organic on a flat map. So yeah, if given enough time, well, I don't think the terraforming is going to allow that. That I, I don't think they're going to allow the land masses to reach the edge because that would imply more people having access to the edge. And, and I think that's off limits. This one's called Flat Earth with a Curve. Hi, Mark. I watched your videos last year, and it really got me thinking about the possibility of the Earth being flat. But due to life, 
due to life, I really haven't put too much extra thought into it since. However, I just watched your documentary on Netflix, and now here I am thinking about it. I have came up with an idea. Maybe I'm not the first one to come up with this, and if so, please let me know. What if the Earth is flat but with a curved plane? Yeah, possible. I feel this would help explain a few ideas people use to debunk the flatter theory. I also have a religious theory that involves the sun. I have had this theory long before uh, I ever heard the term flat earth, and now it makes even more sense. Hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, people have kind of talked about it, which is why the Orlando Ferguson map looks like, and I've got to say it, I, I don't mind. It looks like a roulette table with a little bit of a curve. Definitely not the age, 8 inches per mile squared. So, could there be possibly a little curve involved? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I'm not going to throw it out. Uh, but it's definitely not a globe. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, there's a short answer for you. Yeah, very possible. Why not? This one's called, You Make Me Laugh. Oh, please let me please let it be a troll one. Mark, I just heard your interview with Vita Guerra. G-U-E-R-R-A. I heard it in your voice trying to flirt. <laughs> Uh, hey, I would have done the same thing. It just made me laugh. I just had to say something. Thanks, Mark. And that's from David. No, no, I, I wasn't necessarily trying to, to flirt with Vita. First of all, she's young enough to be my daughter. Uh, and second, uh, she was just an open host. I, I didn't, it, she had an open mind. And uh, honestly, she was wide, I mean, wide open on this thing. She, she wanted to talk about everything and she was shooting down nothing. So, I mean, you just get positive reinforcements. You get feel goods. If if I if I have a if I'm talking to a host and that host is is giving me positive reinforcement, I am going to reciprocate in kind. Uh, if they're negative, you know, I'm going to I'm going to dig in my heels a little bit. And that, that's just natural. So, uh, okay, truth is, yeah, I might have been flirting a little bit. I mean, if you saw, you, 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 you type in her name, Vita Guerra, G-O-E-R-A, and then click on images, you'll know why. All right, moving on. This one's called... Greetings, Mark. I'm checking out the concept of Flat Earth and had a thought. Arctic, Antarctica, basically of the Ark and against the Ark or Dome. The names are interesting considering it was supposedly discovered in 1839. Love your work watching Strange World 21. <laughs> wow. Uh, Polaris experiment is really something. That's from Liana. Antarctica. Against the Ark or Dome. Huh. You know, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I like it. All right, this one's called Prison, School, or Entertainment. Mark, you sometimes... You sometimes use this... Oh, boy. Okay, uh, this is from Rob, uh, Rob, Rob McKenzie. Rob, come on, grammar check. I know what he's going to say. You sometimes say it's a prison, school, or entertainment analogy. I because that first sentence was just terrible. Uh, this one thing I found odd is you normally assume it's us that are having the entertainment. Who's to say we are not a live version of what we would call? Car wreck TV, just a thought. Yeah, you know what? I, I mentioned this to a, a high school I was talking to just recently. And I, I mentioned the South Park show, South Park, the animated show. And they did an episode some years ago. Look this up if you get a chance called Earth Canceled. And where the, the entire Earth, of course, it was a, a globe. Uh, the entire Earth was actually a television show like the Truman Show. But it was the whole world. And our ratings had slipped so far that they were going to uh, terraform the whole thing and cancel Earth and basically wipe us out. And the South Park kids had to save it. So, yeah, I don't know. And, and that's not, they're not, the, they didn't invent this. There's all sorts of people that have, have gone down this road that we are uh, entertainment for somebody else. Very, very possible. This one's called Old World, New World. Mark, I think the main difference the globe model brought to the world is that it divided the world into old and new. That made a big difference politically, economically. People no longer make these distinctions now. But think about it like this. Universal Music Group's logo shows only half the world. They'd probably love to use the UN flag for their logo instead, right? I had clicked over from an artist that was signed with Universal Music France, the old world, but their logo only shows the new world. I just think that made a difference culturally, historically, in how things developed, regardless of whether Flat Earth is untrue. That's from Matthew. Yeah, it's good. Enjoying these emails so far. 
and I and I do not really pre-screen these. Uh, let's see. That's one sent to Globusters, David Weiss, and three others. So I'll let them answer that. This one's called "This Is It." Flat Earth. <laughs> That's it. James from James Bond and he spelled it G A M E S. Hey, cool. Yeah. Flat Earth is it. It's the most interesting topic in the world right now. No play on words. This one's called Interview. Hello, Mark. My name is Jack. I'm the creator of several different things, like a podcast made of voicemails, a live role playing show, some party games. You can see all that nonsense on my site show. I'm about to start a new show where I learn about new things. You came across my radar when I heard someone mention flat earth stuff and realized I know nothing about what you want to teach people. So I'm wondering if you'll be willing to be a guest on my show to tell me some basics and answer some questions. It's worth noting that I am doing so with an open mind. None of what I focus on this show is to be ridiculed or debated. This is about listening. A core theme of the show that is our entire existence is insanely confusing. And that all angles are worth viewing. The tone will be respectful and inquisitive. I really hope you can join me. Thanks for your time, Jack. And I won't list his site, but yes, I'm going to be doing a thing with him. So thank you for that. And if anyone wants me to do an interview, uh, you can you can throw out my name uh, to anybody and just say just assume I will say yes for the most part, unless it's a troll channel, and then I will not. Uh, this one's called "Good Job on the Interview, Boss." Crushed it. That's from Nathan Thompson. I think he means uh, the interview I did on, on TV for the Today Show, Australia, which was kind of a last minute thing where I had to go down to Seattle and set up with a link. And we did, I think, eh, 10 minutes. So it was fun. This one's called Flat Earth Research Article. Hi, Mark. I recently started writing a research article for my English class about the Flat Earth. I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions for a small interview portion through email. If it's not possible, or if you would not like to, that's totally fine with me. Here are the questions I prepared. Uh, and I won't answer them here because I, I wrote her and I, I, you guys know what I'm going to answer. Uh, one, how did you first get into Flat Earth Theory? Two, how long have you been part of the movement? That's kind of redundant, isn't it? Uh, three, what do you think are some goals that you have as a flat earther? Four, do you expect the flat earth movement to grow in society? If so, where do you think its movement will go in the future? Five, what does your family think about the theory that the earth is flat? Are they supportive? Six, what are your views on the round earth? Do you think it's logical? Can it be supported? As, wow. Getting a lot of Skype calls recently. Uh, thank you for your time. And that's from Victoria. So, yeah, I, I did write her back and answer those. This one's called Strange Earth Organisms Have Somehow Survived Long and Outside the, the ISS. That is, a, that is a headline. Dear Mark, you need to see this if you haven't already. What a load of BS. That's from Crypto Bear. <laughs> not, not to be confused with Owen Benjamin's bear people. Uh, yeah, the, uh, again, just another, every, any story you see in space is just a space beat. They don't even care if you read the article. All they're doing is trying to remind you that you're on a globe. Uh, face on Mars, you're on a globe. Saturn's rings, you're on a globe. We're reclassifying Pluto. Globe, globe, globe. That's all they care about. It's like if they give you a space story, it reinforces that, oh, hey, by the way, there's space. Therefore, I'm on a globe. Who said there was space? Same people that told you the Americans went to the moon? Don't believe the Americans. This one's called Ready, Jet, Go. Mark, my kid watches a PBS cartoon called Ready, Jet, Go. It is a fun, it is fun. It has a Jetsons feel to it. A couple of times during every episode, they have a segment where NASA spokesperson explains the tenets of space exploration, the solar system, and the interviewing of astronauts. Sure enough, after looking up who produces the show, NASA is listed. PBS tax money and NASA tax money pushing the narrative at the same time to our youth. Frustrating. Thanks, Dino. Yep, look it up, guys, if you get a chance. Ready, jet, go. And people wonder why I'm not shy about saying that we're going after the kids. Yep, yeah, well, fight fire with fire, I say. This one's called Hello, Mark. Greeting from New Zealand. You did a great job on the Today Show down here. A shame... Oh, no, sorry. Greeting from Oz? God, I should be wearing my glasses. Oh, right, because sometimes if you're down there in Australia, they, they shorten it to OZ. Um, and whenever I see Z, I immediately think New Zealand. Uh, you did a great job on the Today Show down here. A shame you are abruptly cut off. Next time they say we are experiencing satellite dramas or cut you off, you need to let them know. 
Uh, I should be okay if satellites don't exist and it's all ground-based towers. Keep up the great work and fight for the truth. Uh, could you send me a copy of the survival guide? Uh, that's from Chris. And hopefully I responded to him. Yes, I did. And uh, so I sent him the survival guide. And uh, by the way, I don't think it's just ground stuff. or um, It's also fiber optics. Most of the data that we deal with in the world is through undersea fiber optic cables because all it is is just, you know, you just got to make really, really long cables, hundreds and sometimes thousands of miles long. And they've had ships that have done this forever. That's how we did it in the old days. And that's how we've been upgrading it. You just lay a big waterproof cable on the floor. It's just money and it's way easier. And if there's a problem, you can, you know, splice the cable, I think. I, I don't know how they fix them if there's problems. I should look that up. This one's called Curvature Flat Earth Emails 133. Hi, Mark. I am replying to your questions mentioned in QA 133. An inclinometer would measure incline or gradient encountered on the journey. An altimeter would measure any altitude difference from start to finish. A gyroscope would measure differences from horizontal starting point to finish point. This journey uh, is 2,704 miles, leading to an estimated curvature of 923 miles if the devices perform to expectations. Unfortunately, I do not have the finances for such an experiment. I was just hoping to create conversation on the subject of railway journeys as an alternative experiment to lasers and distances above water. Your subject matter experts state quite clearly that all surveying is done on a flat plane. If this is in fact true, it stands to reason that this would be an opportunity to prove a significant lack of curvature over much longer distances. Cheers, stay flat. Greg Thomas, Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Australia. P.S. Keep up the great work that you do for the Flyer community. You inspire us all to learn more. Thank you. Oh, that's awfully nice. Thanks, man. It's the kind words that keep me going. It's true. It's true. Okay. Uh, this one's called Man with a Science Degree Really Truly Believes the Earth is Flat. Man with a Science Degree. Um, and it's from mirror.co.uk. And the story... Uh, who is this guy? S Sa Safun. I'll look it up if you get a chance. But it's on it's on the uh, the UK uh, news feeds. And yeah, there's lots lots of us out there. This one's called "Rise in Flat Earth Conspiracy Thanks to Protection of Speech." Neil deGrasse Tyson says, and that's yeah, he's been tweeting this, and that was on Newsweek, and I, I read this on one of my things recently, Newsweek.com. Uh, so if you guys don't don't know, Neil deGrasse Tyson has been off the radar for a while because of the whole Me Too thing. He was accused of a whole bunch of stuff, and his networks, the ones that have shows with him, one is Fox, and the other is National Geographic. They looked into it and they said, I, I think they probably settled out of court, whatever it is. They just had to get him back on television. They weren't going to keep him out, out forever. And so he's now back in. And they said, oh, well, we've done our due diligence and now he can be on back on television. And what was interesting was when he was getting warming up, getting ready to get back on TV, he started making tweets against Flat Earth and uh, a number of them and so look that up if you get a chance uh you can just look up neil degrasse tyson newsweek and it, the the story is uh let's see flat earth spread free speech uh but that's yeah it's look look it up if you get a chance very very interesting neil degrasse tyson he does not lash out uh, much against us lately but uh, he has uh, because he's getting back into tv this one's called bristol meetup promo Mark, world-class responses to the Australian TV news channel. Very pleased for you. Excellent job. I wondered whether you'd be so kind and mirror this Bristol meetup promo for me. And that's from Robin. Yep, uh, the Bristol Flat Earth meetup, April 2019. It's already out there. Check it out if you get a chance. This one's called The Waterline is Something to Look Into. This, oh, and he sent me some uh, attachments, examples, and locations. And that's from Benji. Yep, I will look at that. Thank you very much. This one's called Truth Quest Calgary, TFR, Truth Frequency Radio. Uh, uh, yes, I, uh, I got to mention this because the, the Calgary conference is coming up. Uh, hey, everyone, I did a radio interview with Zen Garcia last night to promote our conference. Just wanted to share. That's from Sarah Stewart. She's the one that's pointing on in Calgary, and I will be up there in May. I got to get my tickets for that pretty soon. This one's called, Have You Seen? Mark, have you seen the Logan Paul documentary? <laughs> Shows you how far back in emails I am right now. Absolutely hilarious. So well done. Made Flat Earth look even stupider than it actually is, if that's possible. And that's from Matt, who is a troll. 
And yes, I did see the Logan Paul documentary, and he could have made it so much better if he wanted to. Uh, and forget, don't don't forget that I was well, no live shots. I was not in his documentary because I left the conference because he showed up. Uh, Logan Paul is a horrible, horrible person. Uh, he will never be forgiven in my eyes, and I hope the media, mainstream media, never forgives him for the suicide forest stunt. Uh, if you haven't looked that up where he did at the end of, of um, 2017 or the beginning of 2018, depending on how you look at it, it was literally, I think, on the last day of 2017, where he he was tired, apparently, of pulling pranks on people in the United States and Europe, so he decided to go to Japan and go to a forest where, where people uh, commit suicide and actually troll dead bodies. Uh, there are certain things you can't pull back from. Sorry, man. It's, it's awful, awful, awful what he did. And, uh, yeah, so his, his documentary yeah, got some hits, but, hey, it's just generated metrics. All I cared about in the end was that he did not try to represent us, and he absolutely did not. If he wanted, he could have done so much damage to the Flat Earth if he wanted to, but he just doesn't have the brain cells to do it. So, there you go. That's my response to Logan Paul's documentary. This one's called, Hi Mark, Can We Test the Equator for Shape? Dear Mark, has anyone sponsored the idea of flying an airplane around the around the belt of the Earth to avoid the north south north south poles and end up the exact spot where the where the plane took off? Uh, to avoid the north south poles, what you mean around the equator? This would prove flat versus globe once versus all. I think he's talking about north south, like a, a polar route. Uh, I suspect that suspect the plane would run into the ice wall is that, is that what you're saying i don't think the first i don't think you worded that right uh it's a very simple experiment if the plane returns to the original spot the earth is round of course the word round remember it's globe ball sphere not round dinner plate is round if the plane runs into ice poles even though there is no north and south poles around the belt what belt are you talking about you mean just just making a loop around north south okay then it's definitive proof of flatness am i missing something here thanks jack uh P.S. Remember to petition the gyro laser test as not correctly using two loops of light to rule out motion of the ether without two cycles of light in the opposite direction. It's still just measuring the Coriolis, not the proper Sagnac effect. The gyro manufacturers are mistaken by claiming their device can measure Sagnac. It cannot. Best of luck. Look, the easier way to explain that would be, okay, there's a 15 degree movement. What's moving? Is the ground moving or is the sky moving? We say it's the sky. Mainstream science says it's the ground. So, what is it? You know, who are you going to believe? This one's called Interview Request. Uh, hi, Mark. My name is Jackson, producer of the 105 New FM radio show in Newcastle, Australia. The station broadcasts within the largest provincial market in Australia, as well as across 14 other stations across the East Coast, including... Uh, all these stations here, there's at least, what, 5, 10, 12 of them. I was wondering if you'd be interested in doing an interview with our breakfast show. If so, let me know and we can organize time for a pre-record. Thanks, Jackson. Yep, and we did, and they played it, and it was fun. I enjoyed doing that one. There was another one that wasn't so fun because she didn't, uh, the, one of the hosts there, I usually go against three for breakfast, and they, uh, the, the girl didn't like me very much. I don't know what I did. She just, the whole concept just offended her in so many ways. And she just kept calling me insane. It's like, all right. Uh, this one's called New Pick. Hey, Mark. Sean from Greenwood, Indiana here again with a new pick. Hope you dig it. Keep it flat. P.S. Here's a joke for you. What did the astronaut say to the other astronaut? Answer, nothing. There are no astronauts. <laughs> it's good. It's good. I like it. All right. This one's called Questions About Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I'm sending my regards to you via this email from Iran. Me and a few academic colleagues of mine have recently started questioning the shape of the earth. We have, of course, watched all the videos and read what we could find. The videos, even the most recent documentary, Behind the Curve, were mostly focused on the FE community, society, and such. What we could not find was a well-documented, well-explained scientific model. What are you talking about? There are all tons of them out there. I myself have studied law. Well, I thought you were a scientist. And those colleagues of mine who are most interested in the theory are theology experts. Okay, again, not scientists. But we have scientists, engineers, physicists, chemists, and such among us too. Okay, 
So we need precise science to be able to firstly understand, then advocate the idea and convince those more doubtful minds. There is critically, this is critically important to us, especially on a religious studies level. You would find it fascinating how alongside the Bible, the Holy Quran could agree with uh, Flat Earth as well. I think we could mutually benefit each other as we ourselves have some ideas to better justify or elaborate the theory more. I should mention that we are on the same boat here as you are. We do believe that nothing NASA or the higher-ups have told people makes sense. It is all a bunch of lies that we have never believed in the first place. So could you please send us any sort of scientific data or document that explains the FE, the suggested model, and such, and leaves no loopholes? <laughs> ah, I see what you see there. This is kind of like a hidden troll thing. Thanks you in regards, and then university lecturer out of Iran. And he might be out of Iran. Very well made. It's like, just show us, we've heard this time and time again, show us absolute scientific proof that, that the earth is flat. It's like, no, because if I had absolute scientific proof, I'd be on the cover of every magazine ever simultaneously. I would, I would, everyone on their phone, 6 billion smartphones would have my face on it. Uh, I can't, can I prove to you the, in a court of law that the earth is flat right now? No, I can't. But I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is some sort of flat earth model. There you go. Uh, I mean, I can give you my five scientific points, but uh, you're not going to like them because they want data. Sorry. This one's called my second flat earth license plate. Oh, yeah. And this is from the guy in California that sent me his license plate, F-I-L-T-A-S-T. And the new one is called W-U-C-U-R-V-E, otherwise known as what curve. As on a shiny red Corvette. Right on. California. Coming through with the license plates. Thank you for that. This one's called uh, EarthNullSchool.net. Hi Mark, it's Alma. What have you have you seen this map? I got this link from Taboo Conspiracy. If this is true, is this the true shape of the oceans? Or is it distorted due to the projection? You can click to any area and gives you temperature and coordinates. This looks amazing. Please let me know what you think of it. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot seen it before but I, but I do like it so thank you for sending and don't worry I don't mind if people send me repeats this is called the predictions of comets and eclipses hello Mark I've been researching flat earth since late August of 2018 only to be fully convinced that we've been lied to about the creation of our existence since the day we were born from time to time I still watch your video compilation of all the flat earth clues and I deeply appreciate your knowledge and honesty on explaining the questions we all have about the reality of flat earth more so than any other researcher and their videos on youtube well thank you my email question to you is according to mainstream science they claim that kepler's laws of elliptical orbits on a heliocentric model that with math and science we can only have those precise precise predictions of solar eclipses halley's comet if the sun is the center of the universe and the earth is a ball orbiting around it and that those accurate predictions can never be done on a flat earth model can you possibly explain how both models can actually achieve these predictions whether on a flat earth or sphere thank you so much for your time and looking forward to hearing back from you either from youtube email videos or direct email response thank you and god bless joseph yes okay so again remember we are living in uh, an illusion everything you see in the sky the stars the planets the sun and the moon are just some giant elaborate beautiful clock system and if it is a clock system, then part of it is going to be an illusion. I'm not saying that the sky does not indicate that it is a heliocentric model. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the heliocentric model is an illusion designed by whoever built this place. Uh, look, the, the globe and the solar system, you would want to put... I said this in the clues. I, I said this in, since day one, which is sooner or later, you're going to have to tell the population or don't tell them. The, that there's a there's a border out there that there's a fence that you're in some sort of building and the best way to do that is to make the fence invisible to tell them it's like look uh there is no fence because you're on a globe and it's in the solar system and you're never getting off and even if you got off there's nowhere for you to go you're you're trapped uh but it's wide open so and you don't have the technology to go anywhere so yes that's what you're seeing in the sky uh, Halley's comet goes by and again we can simulate all these things in a planetarium right now it's just part of the projection it's just a pretty pretty light show that's all it is but thank you for the question and i'm not trying to be condescending in any way shape or form 
This one's called Flat Earth. Hey, Mark, I was thinking the Earth was very possible until I remembered uh, when I was in Korea for six months. I remembered that the toilet water swirled opposite of how it swirled in Denver where I live. If the Earth was flat, the water should swirl the same way everywhere. No? That's from Juan. Okay. If you get a chance, and I'm not going to explain it in very much detail, look up Toilet Water Experiment by a giant YouTube channel called Smarter Every Day where he was curious about that as well. There's a lot, you know, it's kind of like a YouTube version of Mythbusters. And he decided to set up a massive experiment simultaneously, northern and southern hemisphere, with these giant waiting pools. Not toilets or sinks, but giant waiting pools. And si again, simultaneously, the exact same equipment. It was a, a fantastic experiment. And he showed that basically there is no spin difference. It's so nominal that it's it's almost impossible to detect at all. So the question is, why do we have that, you know, why has why that myth been out there for so long? And that is how the water jets are positioned or how the water drains in a particular direction. Remember, you can do this in your kitchen sink right now. You don't even have to do it uh, in, in, call up your friend in Australia. That is, move the faucet from one side of the, 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 um, the drain to the other, clockwise versus counterclockwise. And you don't even have to put much flow. You can do this right now. Not hard to do, so it's a myth. Short version, it's a myth. Look up Smarter Every Day Toilet Water Experiment. It's brilliant. This one's called... Wow. Mark, in 10 years from now, all your crap will be gone. <laughs> I'm protecting my kids from the likes of you. They both shakes heads... Oh, he's not from here. Uh, listening to you. I now see that your videos on YouTube is really dropping. Hurrah! Congrats with your five minutes of fame. Also, congrats with the hilarious movie on Netflix. Me and my family are laughing. And that's from Alf Martin Olson. And I wrote him back and I said, I, I, I'm using this line more and more. I said, yeah, you know what? You don't have to worry about the kids because we already have them. But by all means, you can, you can laugh all you want. Uh, but your kids probably will be researching this in the background because they're more pliable than you. Just saying. So I wrote him, I wrote him back. I do write back trolls from time to time and I take a couple digs. I know you're not supposed to feed the trolls, but if you're going to email me, if you're going to actually troll, and he's not actually even trolling. He, it got into his head. He watched the documentary and it freaked him out so much. I don't think he's ever trolled anybody in his life. This guy just wrote me. He's like, you are dumb. You are an idiot. My kids, we are all laughing at you. Really? Because flat earth's in your head so much that you'd actually email a complete stranger and tell him that we're laughing at you. I'll take that. It's in your heads. We got a chance of converting your kids right now. This one's called, Is God Real? Here's the scientific proof. Um, more real scientific observations that are compelling in proving a creator. Please share. All right. And the video is called, boy, it's got a lot of advertisements on it. That's not a good sign. Oh, it's from the SGT report. The elite don't want you to know God is real. Here's the proof. You know what? SGT just got on board with us. I'm totally for that. In fact, I'm pretty sure I subbed to him now. Uh, this one's called, quote from Einstein, when you first drink from the cup of science, you become an atheist. But when you reach the bottom, you see God. Mm, brilliant. I will say this. I don't care uh, if people discredit Einstein uh, about his scientific stuff. He was probably one of the most quotable intellectuals ever. I've never seen an intellectual get it where the, because his quotes were so simple. And, but, and, and there, there's these cool little riddles, these cool little enigmas. Uh, he was the guy that came, I mean, seriously, I think Hallmark, and he didn't trademark any of them. Um, uh, he probably should have. He didn't know he was going to be so, so quoted. Uh, my favorite is that it's used in Hallmark and gift card shops all the time, which is uh, gravity cannot be held responsible for people falling in love. That's brilliant. That's such a great line. Uh, this one's called Your Vid. The Mark, the earth is flat. Just watched one of your videos. He didn't tell me which one. That's from Sean. Okay, thanks, Sean. If you're going to tell me something about that. Uh, just make sure you, I'd, I'd love to know what you were watching because I got a lot of videos out there. This one's called Nightline. Hi, Mark. The other night I was staying up too late and watched my guilty pleasure show, Nightline. Really? Is that your guilty pleasure show? And there you were. Uh, will the movie be shown in Langley? Hope is all as well. And that's from Andrea. She's a reporter at the Daily Herald out here in Washington. And she actually came out and visited me last year. And uh, no, it probably won't be shown in the theater in Langley because it's already on Netflix. Although I got to say the uh, the documentary has now is now going through film festivals again. 
I, I, I thought it was like a one-shot deal where once you go into film festivals and you sell it to Netflix and iTunes and, and Amazon, uh, you don't get to show it in festivals anymore. But apparently you do. Those, they're, they're out there showing them. You can look it up at BehindTheCurveFilm.com. There's more showings in different film festivals. So, hey, cool. Great for them. Happy this thing continues to have legs uh, a full full year later after it was released. Moving on, this one's called Flat Earth is the Truth, T-R-U-F-E. Mr. Mark, how are you, sir? Fantastic. Now that the niceties are out of the way, could you please explain a number of things to me? Okay, I'm going to rail off the questions. Uh, I will not answer them, though, because we just don't have time. Uh, one, how is it under flat earth sitting on my deck? I can watch the sun go down over the horizon, yet the airplane flying over my head still reflects the sun's light. Why can I see the ISS and the other satellites in my telescope at night if they aren't real? Why do the positions of the stars change relative to the seasons? Four, why does the sun change position or of where it rises every day until 1221 when it stops until the 25th and starts moving back in the other direction? I personally witness this at my desk at work in a service garage where I could witness the sunrise every morning for two weeks every January. There would be an hour period where the sun actually got into my eyes and my desk. Five, nonstop flights from Johannesburg to Sydney. How does that work? Five or six. Why will a triangle plotted on a 2D map not return you to the same spot on a 3D plane? My grandfather taught me that one on the ocean in his fishing boat. I think your explanation of why you left the convention with Logan Paul showed up as kind of weak. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, this Now we are officially a troll, uh, troll email. If you could actually back up your theories, I think like the prudent thing to do would have been to make him stay and look like a fool. Let me be frank with you, Mr. Sergeant. I think you are either a shill trying to capitalize as much as you can off other people's ignorance, or I think you are a misinformation plant to keep people distracted. Either way, I find nothing genuine about you, especially your learning after learning you bailed when you thought you might get confronted. I have family in Seattle, and while I know you will be very busy with your pseudo-celebrity status in the upcoming months, I would be more than happy to meet with you in person and hear what you have to say uh, when I am in that area, happy to debate you at any time. And he doesn't leave his real name. Although his name apparently is Matt and I'm not going to give out his last name and his age. You know, look, if you're going to troll me at least, and I, I'll meet with you at any time and you don't even leave your real name. Come on, man. Uh, and as far as Logan Paul's thing is concerned, nope, worked for me. He absolutely trolled the hell out of us and I wasn't on it. And I made my statement and I was utterly vindicated. Um, Oh, and by the way, when Logan found out that I knew that he was trolling, he left the hotel. If you didn't already hear that, because that was in his behind the scenes thing. He, he said, yeah, it, but he because he because he knew that I did a podcast uh, with Zulu one and said, look, Logan's absolutely going to troll us. And he left because he was worried. He didn't think he could pull it off anymore. Uh, confronting, confronting Logan Paul. He would have never confronted me. He didn't confront anybody. Uh, about it. He, he, he trolled. That was it. He wasn't trying to confront people. He was trying to get footage and then troll us at, in cutscenes after the fact. Please. If you're going to troll, troll better. This one's called FE question, sort of. Hi, Mark. I love the topic and have enjoyed listening to almost all of your Strange World episodes. I probably never will be convinced one way or the other, but I'm open to the possibility. Just wondered if this has ever been discussed, if satellites are real and can take detailed pictures of the Earth, why wouldn't any country be concerned about the no-fly zones? Because, of course, for military bombing reasons. Wait, can we detailed pictures of the Earth? Why would any country be concerned about no-fly zones? Uh, if satellites are real... And can no no satellites well there are some satellites that are real but they're they're not they didn't get up there because of rockets but i'm trying to figure out the military bombing reasons no fly zones why wouldn't could you be concerned about i don't i don't know the question uh if you tend to answer on air please let me know so i can listen to your thoughts uh, i'd like to but i'm trying to figure out what the question is I, i'm sorry i gotta stop on this just wondered if this has ever been discussed if satellites are real and can take detailed pictures of the earth which some may and some may not uh, why would any country be concerned about no-fly zones? No, no, no-fly zones are, are almost all military. So that's just uh, it's because of military bases. I mean, like like for example, Area Fifty One. There's a perfect no-fly zone in the United States. We have a couple. Um, you can't fly over military, not just military bombing reasons. But uh, you can't fly over, uh, even I, we can't take a, I can't take a Cessna and fly over a military base. 
But then you've got airspace that's no fly zones for other countries. Like if you're going to go from one country to another, uh, if you're not commercial aircraft, you can't uh, just fly into another country's airspace. You have to have permission. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what your question was. Sorry. This one's called <clears throat> Flat Earth Materials. And it's a whole bunch of videos. Please see the videos for additional staff of <clears throat> on FE model. Got it. This one's called, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I'm absolutely 99%. Uh, I'm over my cold. Uh, Georgetown University unanswered questions. Mark, below are each of your unanswered questions answered in the form of a YouTube video. I'm curious as to what counterpoints you have for these responses as this gentleman elaborates on each in full. If you truly hate Flat Earth and are looking for someone to prove you wrong, here it is. Max. And yeah, it's from Simon Dan and whatever. Uh, sorry, Simon Dan hasn't shut down Flat Earth. Why not? And yes, I would love to get a, a, a Flat Earth. Prove me wrong. Pro show me the curvature. Show me uh, how uh, the gravity defeats the vacuum of space. Show me the eclipse shadow. Show me the temperature of the moon is wrong. And show me how the Van Allen radiation belts uh, didn't kill anybody. And why they didn't kill anybody. Those five questions. The, the bigger thing isn't that Simon Dan answered the questions the bigger question is why the georgetown physicist bailed why he completely bailed and again it wasn't my idea it was a german television team that contacted me uh zd1 and zd1 or zf1 i can't remember i think it was zd1 and they were the ones that set up the whole thing and he that was it he folded so i don't I don't care what Simon dan says he buys subs he absolutely look at Social Blade. If you want to look up, by the way, you guys, in case you guys missed this, there's a, a website out there called Social Blade, which you can actually look into uh, just about any YouTube channel or social media channel, but especially YouTube, and you can see where uh, the hits and the likes and all that stuff are, are coming from. So, uh, let's see, this one's called Where Did the Moon Come From? A New Theory. Uh, hi, Mark. A fresh new disky theory. Came out of her imagination, video game like, and it's from Sarah T. Stewart. Okay, I will check it out. This one's called Media Interview. Hi, Mark. I, I, would it be possible to conduct an interview with the Flat Earth and the Movement? We are an international weekly broadcast. Oh yeah, Trinity TBN have a global following. Regular reviewers. We're not looking to disparage your views. Rather, looking for a spokesperson to explain the movement. And yeah, so they're going to be coming up here. Uh, pretty soon and visiting me and so it's it's always nice when those guys show up okay let's find a fun one to end on i'm not gonna end on an interview request this one's called thanks for the great video mark i had a friend send me a video five years ago and i laughed then towards the end of 2018 i was working late and decided to click on the video that mentioned hiding god hours and hours of content later i feel in my gut that it's far more logical and likely we are on a flat earth extremely bummed now that i missed the fe 2018 because i live in the highlands ranch area all mentioned wondering if you were willing to meet up and discuss your thoughts and findings since the video from the conference and any additional research will let you know will you let me know if you are willing to meet up and chat more about your knowledge surrounding the flat earth for example how old is the earth dinosaurs etc much appreciated thank you and that's from steve he's out in colorado and i wrote him and said look i'm sorry i i lived in boulder for 20 years and i'm not there now i'm up in the northwest on the west coast um let's did I write this person back yes okay well, we won't end on an interview request but I can read it anyway uh, dear mr. Mark Sargent my name is Anika I'm working for a for Dutch will Germany international broadcaster we're broadcasting worldwide in over 30 languages like to use parts of your video for a uh, shift and our new report on conspiracy theories and why and how they spread on the net we will be showing some material from the movie behind the curve would love to compliment com compliment this by a direct quote of your youtube material we broadcast worldwide on tvdw.com and our related facebook and youtube channels we would credit your video any way you wish thank uh, since we start producing this week a quick re reply would be great thanks in advance anika and yep i said i tell anybody you want to use the clues you want to tear them apart use them for any they're creative commons license anyone can use them take put them in your video i will i've never thrown a copyright strike at anyone for anything i mean yeah i did a um uh a miss uh 
uh, identity, not a identity theft, but uh, there's a thing where you, you can't like put me as a, um, a 400 pound red haired Chinese man and say, oh, this is Mark Sargent. You can't do that in a YouTube video uh, and say he's in flat earth. And so some guy said that I was a deadbeat dad living in Boston and showed a video of me in court and it wasn't even close to me. And the only thing you could say was I was white. And uh, I had to write them back. And when you do that in YouTube, you have to send them your driver's license. You have to send YouTube drive. And they put it on file and they and YouTube looks at it. It's, called, it's like, oh, yeah, that's not him. Uh, let's see. Man, a lot of interview requests. Sorry. Uh, Divided We Fall uh, did, did a thing with them. And so, yes, thank you for that. And let's see. One more. Okay. We'll end on this one. This one's called Thank You. Mr. Sergeant, I watched a video on Netflix about Flat Earth based on the video and the other research. I get the feel, feeling behind the movement. You are very passionate about the cause. While I do not share the same view, I do not feel the society should be shunned or mocked. One thing that sticks in my mind that you said is question everything. We are truly mindless. If we don't question everything, maybe as more evidence surfaces, my mind could be swayed. One thing to consider is radio waves. I'm a ham radio operator. I've worked high frequency and talked around the world. One thing to consider is how I can point my antenna one way, hear a station and also point the antenna 180 degrees and hear the same station. This is with a YAG antenna that is very deaf from the backside closest to the reflector. Something to think about. Again, thank you for questioning everything. And that's from Matt. Yeah. Don't know. As far as how the, the radio waves are going, ham radio. Do not know. Because I don't know a lot of people that do ham radio. Anyway, thanks for everybody that sent in uh, an email to me. It's very much appreciated. You can always send your questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's msargent23 at comcast.net. And until next time, stay flat.